Today I'm making a gicle. A gicle is a canvas art print that has been stretched on a frame. There are many different sources for these, but I have not been happy with the results that I've seen, so today I'm making my own. Before you get started, here's what you're going to need. You will need to decide on a photograph or a piece of artwork that you own the copyright to, and you will need to get that printed at spoonflower.com onto the linen cotton canvas. What I have done here is in the fat quarter size, also referred to sometimes as the tea towel size, I've had a photograph that I transformed into an oil painting using Photoshop printed onto the linen cotton canvas. That is the best fabric for this project and it will give you the most beautiful results. Then I washed it by hand very delicately. I didn't put it into the washing machine because I didn't want it to get roughed up or come out with wrinkles or lose any of the color. So I delicately washed it by hand, remove any sizing, and that's going to make the gesso adhere to the canvas better. After it was dry, I laid it flat on a towel and let it dry a day or two. So it was completely dry and then I ironed it, made sure there were no creases in it. So I have my fabric here. Then you will need a canvas frame. So here's the frame that I'm going to use. This frame um, or frame pieces are purchased at the art store. They come individually, so you choose the sizes that you want, and they snap together. They have grooves here, and again, for the sake of this video, I'm not going into that because it's a basic skill, but I may cover it on a different video if people have questions about that. When you do put your frame together, you do need to glue it at the joints so it stays together, and then you also need to make sure that it's square. I used a T-square to make sure that my corners were completely square. So I let that dry after I put it together, and obviously, if you've not gotten the hint already, this is a several day project because it goes in stages. So usually what I do to the frame is I seal it with a product by Golden called GAC100, Girl Apple Cat 100. And I did not have that. And because we are in the middle of the COVID crisis, um, it was not available to me and I would have had to order it and wait for it. So I used my clear gesso to seal all this top layer of the wood so as the wood ages it doesn't come through onto the canvas and stain it and that works as a last resort so you've got your photo print you've got your frame that's been dried and glued and um, has the clear coat on top of it to seal it you will also need clear gesso you don't want ordinary gesso because ordinary gesso is opaque white you want to purchase the clear gesso. So that's what I have here. You want some sandpaper um, because if you have any sharp corners, you want to sand those off. I've already done that, so my corners are nice and smooth, and I sealed over that with the clear gesso. But once this is constructed, it's a nice touch to make sure that you don't have any sharp edges that will cut the canvas. A pencil is handy to have. Um, I have a jar of water, so I have recycled a gelato jar. Um, I've got my water in here, and I'm going to pour my gesso into the lid. And if my gesso becomes thick and I need to thin it out, I have the water here to do so. But that's a later stage. You will also need a paintbrush to put on the gesso. Any inexpensive brush for now will do for this stage and you're going to need a staple gun with staples in it because this is very thin wood. Um, I chose to use one quarter inch deep staples. So that is all the supplies that you're going to need. So now we will get started. So to begin, you need to decide on the positioning of your artwork. Now, I could have purchased a bigger frame, but this is the size that I wanted. Actually, my photo, to begin with, was smaller and really only fit into this section, 
but I extended the photo through Photoshop um, to make it a little bit larger so that I would have room to play and figure out exactly how I want to position it. So to begin with, I'm going to lay the frame down and lay the artwork on top and get an idea of where I want it to be. So this is what I'm looking at right here as to what I want. I want to keep most of the top area of the print and I want a heavy bottom with blank space here and I want it somewhat centered. So now that I kind of know where it's going to be, I can lift this and mark with a pencil, but I like to do it this way and you can do it whichever way works for you. I like to frame it with the frame on the outside, center everything, see how it's going to look, and sort of center everything here in the middle. Do keep in mind that what you're going to see is the entire outside of the frame. It will not be on the inside. I'm going to lower just a little bit. I would like just enough to come over the edge on the top. looks pretty centered. So now that I have it centered, using a pencil, I'm going to lift up the corners and I'm just going to mark where the corners are lightly with the pencil so that when I turn it over I can position it properly and I will double check it again once that's done. Okay, so turning it over, and lining up the corners that I marked with the pencil, and I'm just going to lightly fold it back and see what I have got. So it's going to look like that. And I'm very happy with that. So, back over it goes. And since those lines looked good, I'm just going to reposition again. And now I'm going to begin to staple the artwork to the frame. Now, here I'm getting ready to make a mistake. This is the side that I applied the sealer to. This is the side that goes against the fabric. I purposely left the labels on the back side so that I would not forget. So I'm glad I caught that. So I'm going to turn it over, reposition. Okay, so now I'm going to start stapling. I'm going to begin at the center of the length. And in case you're wondering, I'm not sure if I mentioned it already. If I'm repeating, I apologize. So the finished size that I'm using is 20 wide by 14 tall. These canvas stretcher strips, they come in a multitude of sizes. So you can really custom do a, uh, the artwork of your choice. Um, your only limitation is the width of the fabric, which I think think prints at 54 at the most and you'll want to come in just a little bit to make sure that you have enough to go over around the frame. So that's really your only limitation um, as far as the fabric goes and if you can find someone to print you fabric wider then there's even fewer limitations. So I'm going to start here at the top of the artwork in the middle and I'm going to apply one staple. Then I'm going to pull it taut in the middle opposite, flip it around, and add a staple. Now I'm 
going to do the same thing on either side in the middle and you want to make sure you don't um, pull it too much one way or another you want it to stay pretty much centered but you want to give it some tension uh, you don't want it loose around the frame either so you will get a feel for this and perhaps it's a good idea to do a practice first with something that's not precious with maybe just a piece of ordinary canvas from the fabric store. So that's what I have for now. I think that's going to be a good stretch. Um, and now I'm going to continue and go all the way around. I'm going to work this way and this way then from this center point out and from this center point out and I'm going to uh, staple as I go in stages I'm not going to staple all one side at a time I'm going to go across from one side to the other and then from this side to this side so I'm keeping everything taut and even as I go here on the top edge since I only have a small bit to work with it's very easy to align it straight going across so if you want to cut some away to give you a guide that's fine but don't cut it too short um, because you'll mess yourself up so I'm smoothing it out and making it taut this way and putting another staple now I'm going to go to this side here pull it straight and taut and another staple. And I'm just going to continue doing the same thing all the way around until I get the corners. And then the corners will have a different process that we will do to them to make them lie nice and flat. So you get the idea. I'm going to continue this and then we're going to come back when it's time to do the corners. So I've stapled all around the frame. I've done two of the corners already so that you see it's a nice clean edge that you want. And I like the frame to wrap from the sides over as opposed to from the top over because that way when it's hanging on the wall, if you choose to hang it without a frame around it, and you're looking at this edge, it's going to look more uniform. Where this way, you see the, the little ridge of the fabric, but when it's like this, wrapping from the sides around, you're not seeing that ridge, so it gives you a nice cleaner finish. So, we have these two corners left to do. I've stapled right close to the corner. And I didn't mention scissors earlier, but this fabric can fray, and you do want to give yourself some allowance. And if it does do some fraying, you want to cut those little strands away. You don't have to be too particular with it right now, but definitely clean it up after it's all done. So here we go. So I'm stretching this last corner around. So this is the top edge here. So I'm going to take this piece and wrap it around the frame 
and then pull up here so that this comes down into it. So it's going to fold in at a 45 degree angle here and then this is going to lap over flush with the corner. You can also use the edge of your scissors if you're having trouble to give it a nice sharp uh, corner just by sort of holding it. You're not cutting anything. So you're just holding it down there. And I actually want to put one last staple here on the end. this way. So here, once you've got it wrapped over, you can roll this in a bit, putting tension here right at the corner, and roll it in so that you're not seeing it from the top or the bottom. That looks really nice and clean. Make sure it's nice and smooth. No wrinkles. Add bulk and then I'm going to staple it. There we go. That looks really nice. So in here, just doing a final little roll after my adjustments so it comes just a little bit diagonally down and I'm not seeing it over the top edge. Do one staple here. Finish my staples here. So, last corner, the same thing. Letting the top wrap down and the side lap over. a little bit. I'm not saying it's easy, but you can get the right effect. You can see it there. It's nice and smooth. I'll give you a close-up in a moment. And here you see how that's coming out. So again, I'm going to do, I'm going to hold my tension here at the corner and I'm going to do a little roll in and apply my last staples once it is nice and smooth. So that part is all done. Oh, have it upside down. So that part is all done. There it is. And you can trim some of this away. You can leave it till later. So right now I'm just going to trim the frayed parts away because when I trim it close, I'm probably going to hit it with a little bit of fray check on this back end so that over time it uh, continues to stay together and not fray. So here is a close-up of the corner and hopefully it's focusing in. You can see here this is from where the side uh, fabric is wrapping over. You can see the little 45 degree angle fold that is underneath and this is what it's going to look like from the side hanging on your wall. If it was going the other way then you might see this little ridge where it folds over. I'm not sure if the camera is picking up that detail, but it gives you a smoother finish going this way from the side over. 
So that's your corners. Now that the canvas is ready, you want to make sure that there's no dust, debris, little pieces of thread on the top of it before you add your gesso. So along with the scissors, another thing I did not mention earlier is a lint roller. You can also use some tape or you can use your dry brush before you get any gesso on it to brush away any little bit of lint. The lint roller is going to be a better option. You want to do it gently. You don't want your linen to sag. It's not intended to be a trampoline. So you just want to go over it a couple times and just make sure the surface is nice and clean before you put that gesso on it. And that looks like it's good. So now I've got my jar of water here. I may not need the water, but just in case the gesso gets thick, I'm only going to add a little bit at a time and work in small amounts. So I'm going to put a little bit on the paintbrush. And again, this is clear gesso. It looks white right now, but it's going to dry clear. You want to use the clear gesso. If you use the ordinary gesso, it's just going to put a film of white over your artwork and you're just going to have a blank slate. So begin and I'm not going to do random patterns. I'm going to paint across and then I'm going to paint up and down so that it mimics the texture of the linen. And then I'm going to let that dry. That's going to be the first coat. And I'm going to do it really well. Get it nice and saturated and just covered well with the gesso. If you use small amounts of gesso, then you can refill as you go, and you won't have to worry about it drying out. I'm going to get some more gesso, and I'm going to cover with the first layer going crossways, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to start a layer that goes up and down. So now you can see that the gesso is all the way cross horizontally in one layer. So now I'm going to do vertically up and down across the whole painting. I'm not worrying about the sides right now. I'm going to wait till the top layer dries and then perhaps tomorrow I will cover the sides. The sides are not important right now, but I don't want any pooling of gesso on the sides. I'm going to try to smooth that out as I go. And I'm going to try to do nice long strokes for now because I want it to be as smooth a surface as possible. Later on I will enhance the gesso with other methods but for now I just want a smooth clean surface that's sealing the artwork and giving it the appearance of a painting. Right now it has that white haze, but that is going to dry clear. And we will come back to that once that's finished. My second layer is done on this first go round. So I did one layer going horizontally and and I did a vertical layer. I smoothed out all my brush strokes, so what I'm seeing is a white film that's mimicking the texture of the fabric. That's going to dry beautifully, and then tomorrow, once that is dry, I will finish off the sides and possibly give it another coat. 
I'm back in the studio. It's day two. The first layer of gesso has dried. It's very nice. This gesso is giving me a matte finish, which I like. I can add afterwards more details and I can add a glossier finish if I choose to. And I will go over those things in a separate video. In case I didn't mention it before, the gesso that I'm using is a Liquitex Professional Clear Gesso. Again, you want to make sure that you get clear gesso, not regular gesso. Regular gesso is going to be opaque white and it's going to cover up your entire print. Once you start painting it on, it may ruin it and you may not be able to go back. So that's something you, that you want to make sure you have the correct thing. So here we are, it's day two. So I'm going to go and hit the entire surface with more gesso, more clear gesso. So it has two nice coats. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to go across, then I'm going to go up and down. That's not a specific order, but I like to go in both directions so that my paint strokes will mimic the texture that's in the beautiful linen cotton canvas. My canvas is very smooth today, as you can see, because I'm accustomed to uh, wrapping the canvas around the frame, so it's nice and tight. If you are not accustomed to it, you may need a canvas stretcher tool. I'll go over that later. Also, if you are doing a larger giglet, it may tend to ripple more just because there's more surface and it's harder to get it um, as tight. And you may want to apply the gesso before you wrap the canvas. And I'm going to also go over some of those techniques afterwards um, so you can decide on the project that you're doing the way that you want to do it. So for now, I'm just going to reapply. I have my water if my gesso gets too thick, um, but right now it's coming straight out of the bottle. I gave it a nice shake before I put it onto the lid of my jar, and I'm just gonna go in both directions just like I did yesterday, and then I'm gonna let it dry. And tomorrow, we will see how it looks at this finished stage. And once again, there are more details that I can add to it later to give it a more painterly look. Those are a little bit more advanced. Some people may not want to bother with that. They may want to just stop here. So I'm going to go over those things in a separate video, either with this giglet or another one because I'm working on several. Um, and we will go from there. But for now, I'm just going to continue this, and then I'm going to let it dry, and we will be back tomorrow. So here we are at day three after the second coat of gesso has been applied. Everything looks smooth and dry and clear. It looks like a painting, and I love it. I love the results. It uh, has a very matte finish to it, so if you want a glossy finish, you can add a gloss over it that's translucent. I'm going to go back in and add some details with paints and some texture. I'm going to do that in a separate video because that's more advanced and that's more work than some people want to do. If I had not done this tight around the frame, I would have had ripples. So what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to take the staples out on a few sections and show you what it looks like with the dry gesso with the ripples so that you know if you get that effect that's not good and you have to go back in and fix it. I'll show you how to fix it. Also, if you're doing a larger print than this, this one was 20 by 14, but I started out with fabric that was 27 by 18. So I could have gone bigger than this. Any bigger than this, you may want to apply the gesso before you stretch the canvas, and I'm going to show you a method to do that as well. So I have released the top staples and a few on the side so that you can see what happens if you did not get the canvas tight enough. The gesso is going to dry on it and because it's not tight enough it's going to ripple and hopefully you can see these ripples in here but then again when it's tight you don't see that. So if that happens you have to release some of your staples, um, at least the top edge and a little bit on the sides. Uh, you can do it with a little screwdriver. You can dig in there 
and lift them up, pull them out with some pliers. Of course, that requires extra stuff, but you don't want that to happen. Also, this is a relatively small giglet. If you're doing a big one, you may want to apply the gesso first before you wrap it around the canvas, and I'm going to show you a method to do that afterwards for larger prints. The giglet that I'm doing is relatively small, so it's easy to stretch it nice and tight on the frame and get a good final effect. Bigger prints tend to ripple, so this is an option for larger giglets. This piece of fabric is 27 by 18. It is printed for a tea towel. It's not going to be a giglet, but it's a good size for me to demonstrate. So what I will do if I was turning this into a giglet and I wanted to add the gesso first is I would buy uh, stretcher bars. These are four stretcher bars. These are, the small ones are 16 and the longer ones are 26. So they're just under this size and there's a little bit of extra selvage on this fabric. So it makes it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is take this and then just like I did on the other one is I'm going to stretch it across the canvas. I'm not going to be as particular. I mostly want the fabric to be stretched out and smooth. This fabric is not going to be a giglet. I've already said that, but you can notice it has creases in it. It's not been washed. It's not been pressed. So you definitely want to do those things before you begin this process. So you can do it one of two ways. You can go around with the staple gun and stretch it so that it's nice and taut, and then you will apply your two layers of gesso. Or what I like to do so that I don't damage the fabric is I like to take elastic bands, safety pin them to the selvage, and wrap them around the frame. So for this particular one, I would use five bands of elastic, two going this way, and three going in this narrower direction and hold them tight and then I will apply my two layers of gesso one one day let it dry then the other the next day and on the third day when it's well dried out I will remove this and then I will stretch it onto the canvas frame which will be smaller than this one to stretch it on the canvas frame once it has the gesso on it it may need a little bit more pressure and it's a good idea to invest in a canvas stretcher which is these special pliers here these can be found at the art supply store these were under twenty dollars and just over ten i think possibly eleven ninety nine and they're a great tool you can get bigger ones this one's on the small side and they'll run a little bit more expensive. It's a great tool for this project. However, if you're only doing a one of, you may not want to invest in this type of material. You may want to try to borrow one or just try to stretch the canvas yourself using your hands. Since I'm experienced at stretching the canvases, many times I can get them stretched properly. The larger ones though, when I gesso them, they sometimes ripple. So what I will do is what I showed you before, remove some staples and then restretch it by hand until I get the smooth finish. And then you will get the desired effect that you want.